Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day. It is great to be studying God's word with you as we go through the book of 1 Samuel. We're going to be in chapter 15 today. And we're popping back over to uh, Saul as kind of our focus for today. And if you remember, we've been kind of popping back and forth, looking at some different uh, individuals as these chapters focus on different ones. We saw that Saul was the king that uh, Israel had requested, and uh, that has not gone well so far. And a couple chapters ago in chapter 13, we saw where uh, things had kind of gone off the rails a little bit, and Saul uh, chose to disobey God's instructions. And unfortunately, we see that again in chapter 15. And... Uh, Chapter 15 is a little bit of a longer chapter. I want to encourage you to read it on your own just to kind of get the, the full experience here because we won't be able to go through every detail in our time together. But really what at the core of this is is that, uh, that Israel needs to go to war against one of their enemies. Amalek is oppressing them, and, and God gives instructions to Samuel to say, okay, go before Saul as a king and, and, and represent my instructions here. And so, so Samuel does so. They go before Saul and, and Samuel says, okay, we need to go to war. You need to go defeat Amalek. And the instructions are to completely eradicate them. Um, and this is something we see not all the time, but somewhat frequently in the Old Testament where, where God's people are going to war against a neighboring army or nation that is there's really a, a poison to their uh, livelihood. God says, you need to get rid of all of them. If you leave any, it's going to rise up and, and they're going to continue to, to cause problems. And so in this case, God says, get rid of all of them. Don't spare anything. Don't even spare the animals. Get rid of everyone uh, that's a part of this. And so Saul goes to war. He rallies his troops. They go to war. They win the victory and they choose to spare some of the best livestock. They go against the instructions that God had given them. And, and Samuel hears about this, and it says that he grieves, and he spends time praying and pleading and crying before the Lord, trying to understand why his king would not follow the instructions of God. And in verse 17, we see that Samuel goes and confronts the king, confronts Saul about it. And Samuel says this, Though you were little in your own eyes, are you not the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord appointed you king over Israel, and the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go devote to destruction the sinners, the Amicalites, the, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? He's like, God put you in charge of all of this. Why aren't you listening? Why did you pounce on the spoil and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I've gone on mission where the Lord sent me. I've brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have devoted them to destruction. But the people took the spoil, the sheep and the oxen, the best things devoted to destruction, to the sacrifice of the Lord your God in Gilgal. Which is kind of a lie because earlier in the chapter we see that Saul and the people chose to spare these things. And now Saul is blaming his people for doing this instead of taking responsibility. And Samuel says this, has the, Lord, has the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as sin of divination and presumption as in iniquity and idolatry. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you from being king. Now this really begins uh, the the beginning of the end in terms of, of Saul's kingship as uh, the leader of Israel. His decision to directly disobey God's instructions have disqualified him from being king. And I think as we look at this, we should, we should cause us to pause and go, hey, there are two temptations that we as people who are fallen, who have sin and rebellion baked into our existence as humans, even as we're striving to follow God, there's two temptations that we face, that we see here. And the first is to justify our sin and rebellion. You know, you see uh, Saul do that. He goes, oh, well, we just spared them so that we could offer them as sacrifices, and it's a good idea in this way, and I've obeyed in this way, and, and there's all this justification. It just makes me see that how often and how well we are at justifying our sin. We're such good salesmen for our own terrible decisions. But we have to be careful. We're not justifying and making excuses and rationalizations 
for things that don't honor God. Because in the end, he sees through all of that. He sees that our heart really isn't what we're claiming it to be. But secondly, I think the more dangerous thing is that when we get in the place of seeing God's instructions as suggestions rather than commands. I think about how, how Saul seemingly just took these as suggestions that he should do this and instead went, well, I'm going to choose what I want to do instead. And how often do we do that? How often do we look at God's word and say, well, I understand your suggestion, but I'm going to take that under advisement and do what I want instead. I'm going to do my life, my decisions, my relationships, my finances, my thought life, my free time, my life, my way, and just take God's ideas as suggestions and guidance rather than commands and instructions. But yet God's word is perfect. God's instruction and wisdom is perfect and flawless. Why wouldn't we see this as the ultimate authority in our life? Because every time we submit to it, our life is blessed and enriched. And every time we rebel against it, we build a house of cards that comes falling down at some point in the future. So today, let me encourage you, don't be like Saul. Don't, don't see the wisdom and instruction of God and say, oh, I want to do what I want to do instead. But, in, but on the contrary, be obedient. As, as Saul uh, is confronted with this truth here, it, when Samuel says to obey is better than sacrifice. God wants our obedience, our submission to his plan more than he wants some cool good work that we can do for him. So let me encourage you today. See God's word as the ultimate truth and authority in your life, not just a suggestion that you take under advisement. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.